Hey guys, it's Nick here. Uh, I'm making this video blog to talk about a few things. Um, one, I got a game in the mail and I've been waiting forever for this thing to get here. Um, you know how customs can be in the U.S. Uh, crap, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Um, I got, this is the second, I think, European exclusive game that I own, but this is the Lawnmower Man. You know what I find very funny about this game? It was only released in Europe and Japan, the Game Boy version. And yet, it's based on an American-made movie. So why didn't they release this in the U.S.? I played it, and it kind of sucks, but it's actually kind of fun. The problem is, like, at the first level, like, at the second part or whatever, there's these enemies that keep respawning, and it gets very annoying. There's virtual reality segments in here, and those look freaking awesome for Game Boy. But, um, and they control well, too. I was surprised. I thought, I, I played it on an emulator, and it controlled like crap. I played on an actual Game Boy, it controls really great, so, um, and I think, I think only one guy programmed this game, Simon Pick, so, that's pretty cool, but, um, I was able to use my Game Shark and play through the game to beat the game, so I wanted to make sure the whole game worked before I left this guy feedback, so this actually came from Germany, and in Japan it was released as Virtual Wars, I don't know if that's how the actual, or I don't know if that's what the movie was actually called in Japan, or if they just, you know, named it something themselves, but, yeah, this is, overall, this is a pretty fun game, but it's just got a lot of problems. For example, like, if, in the first level, we have to jump up these platforms, and at the top platform, there's this guy running left and right. Well, if, if your head touches his foot, you get killed. Oh, yeah, and that's another problem with the game. One hit deaths in the action levels. There, there's other parts of the game where you get, like, a health bar and stuff. So, I don't know why they couldn't give you one in the action segments, but in those segments, you get hit once and you die. And, by the way, there's no continues in the game, and there is one extra life you can find in the, you know, in the first level, at least that I found, but that's it. So, let's just say four lives, and after you die, you go back to the first, you know, to the first level. There's no continues, and as far as I know, there's no cheat. So, the only way to beat it with cheating is to use, voila, a game shark. Now, if I remember right, I couldn't find any codes on GameHacking.org, so I made some for myself, which hopefully get published on the site, but, um, anyway, so overall, it's a pretty cool game. Now, I wanted to talk about Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Now, I wanted to talk about that because I'm debating whether I should just, you know, I, I what I want to do is I want to play, you know, the rest of the nights. I know I'm going to get the bad ending, but, um... Another thing, too, is, you know, I've seen the good ending, and this is, again, a little warning. If you don't want to, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about something else for a little bit, just so you guys have time to exit the video if you don't want to get spoiled. Because I'm going to talk about the good ending of Five Nights at Freddy's 3. But um, something I almost forgot to talk about is I got my enhanced driver's license today. So I went to the DMV a few weeks ago with my dad, and I, I had to get my license renewed anyway, so... You know, I got my license renewed and I got an enhanced license, so now I can go to Canada and I think Mexico, no problem. Um, now, I would show you guys my license, but a couple things. One, it's got all my personal info on it, so I can't do that. And two, it's got some kind of like weird chip in it or something so bad that you have to actually keep it in the sleeve at all times. You can't just keep it in your wallet. You have to put it in this protective sleeve. So, yeah, you know. So, me and my dad are planning to go to Canada in a couple weeks, though, so we can... You know, he, he wants to pick up something there, and um, I've never been to Canada before, and I have a friend who lives in Canada. I haven't talked to him for a while, but I hope he's doing great. So, Rob, if you're watching, hi. You know, hope maybe sometime I can come visit you. Anyways, so, anyways, okay, so back to Five Nights at Freddy's 3. So I saw the good ending, and what happens is, you know, the way to get it is you're supposed to play all these mini games and, you know, do certain things while in said mini games. And I might do that, but I'm not going to actually do it on video. I'm going to do that on my own time, and maybe I'll record doing, like, the last night or doing the last part of the game to get the good ending. I'll record that, and then that's it, you know. And hopefully, you know, if you go to Scott Cawthon's website, it's just a picture of Freddy Fazbear's hat on the floor, so... Some people are saying that's a sign that it's the last, it's going to be the last game. Because in the third game, I guess what happens in the good ending is you set the children's souls free who were in the suits. I don't know how. I guess just bringing people cake from the dead is, you know, or 
bringing dead people cake anyway makes them feel better you know so why don't you do that for your ancestors or you know family members who have died just go to their graves put a cake in front of their grave and then then they'll actually get to go to heaven or something i don't know it's kind of corny but um some people actually apparently got emotional over that ending and i could see why but to me it's a video game and the only video game that actually made me cry was um, when I saw the ending for Ocarina of Time. Back, and I never beat the game. My sister did, but I never did. I only got to like Jabu Jabu and that was it. <laughs> so, <sighs> yeah. So, again, I do plan on finishing the last three nights. I'm waiting for the damn wiki to, you know, put strategies up there. And I hate the Five Nights at Freddy's wiki because nobody is allowed to edit it besides the administrators. And I thought the point of a wiki was that anybody could edit it. But according to that wiki, you can't edit crap. There are some pages you can edit on there, but there's not much. Most of them are protected by the admins, which is just stupid, you know. It's like, it's a wiki. Let people edit what they want, you know. And you might be like, well, there's a lot of people who are going to edit that because, you know, to add controversies and theories and all that crap. Well, then block it people who keep adding false information. And then let the people, you know, let the rest of the people be able to edit it. Because I shouldn't have to pay for someone else's mistake. That's bullshit. So, yeah, I do plan on finishing the game. I don't know how hard Nightmare Mode is, but if it's too hard, I'm just not going to do it. I know, like, Night 6 and Five Nights at Freddy's 2 took me a long time to do. And the funny thing is, in the first game, it only took me, not I don't even think it took me 10 tries to beat Night 6. But that's because I had a system going. So... You know, it's, and the key there is to just keep Freddy Fazbear, if you keep looking at him in the camera, he'll just stay where he is, he won't move. You know, and he's set on a timer until he moves, and when you look at the time, or if you go to the cameras to look at him on the show stage, then he'll, his timer will reset. I think it, it always resets to a random number, but um, still. So yeah, I'm going to be, I do plan on finishing the game, but I want to wait till there's strategies on FNAF three you know on the wiki that ways you know i don't get the shit scared out of me and i really do try to play with sound effects on it i just i'm too fucking scared to do it for some reason and that's that's bad because i play games like fear and you know games of that sort and they don't scare me at all but this game manages to do it it's just all the cheap jump scares and what was disappointing to me is that one of is that um there's only one animatronic that can actually kill you the others just will like jump scare you and that's it. So that, that was kind of shitty to learn, but it's still a fun game. But if it comes out on iPhone, I'll buy it. You know, I, I, if it's going to be the last game in the series, I don't see why Scott Cotton wouldn't port this game to the game to the iPhone. I could actually see it as an iPhone port. I mean, and touch screen controls actually make it kind of easier to play. So. Um, the problem is that with the first game on iPhone, the controls were like really touch. You had to barely touch the buttons and stuff, at least on my phone, in order to get the controls to work. For you know, and for the second game, I think they worked fine, but the sixth night is literally unpassable. I've heard some people say they've done it, but until I see hardcore proof, I don't believe it. At least not on the same model of phone I'm having. And I already explained what the problem was with that, but. Yeah, I do plan on finishing Five Nights at Freddy's 3. I don't know about the Nightmare Mode, but I'm going to try. You know, I'm going to give it the, the good college try. And I don't play the game when I'm not recording it. So, what you see, like, if you see Night 3, it's going to be, like, my first attempt, or attempt one of my first attempts, trying to beat it. So, you know, we're both in this together. And I wish I had better recording software, because I hate having to put the camera on something and just record you know my monitor from that I want to be able to record it from my computer itself but unfortunately this computer is not good enough to record that so I don't know what to tell you guys anyways thanks for watching guys and hope you guys have a great week um, there is something big I'm hopefully gonna get by the end of this month but um we'll see what happens and to get it, I almost had to sell one of my prototype games, which I am probably going to do. So any people who want my prototypes, you know, get your wallets out. I might be doing it. But then again, I might not. This isn't a surefire thing. But if worse comes to worse, I'm going to have to sell some stuff. And that might have to be one of them. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.